Hello folks, today I'm going to be showing you what goes on inside uh, a vacuum cleaner. Now this vacuum cleaner may be different than yours, it probably is, but this is a very small one, but the same principles apply between small vacuums like this, big vacuums, even shop vacs have the same kind of motors and, and impeller setup that this one does. Now this it does not have brushes, it just has a suction hole and a little squeegee thing. So it's a simple, very simple setup. So we're going to be taking this thing apart. Now you may notice there's some rather unconventional looking holes on either side. And those are actually modifications I made to this to make it get better airflow. Because yeah, uh, it well, there were tiny little slits before and now it breathes better and it has more sucking power. To do this, you're going to need a number of tools, although the main tool you'll need is probably just a Phillips head screwdriver, and that'll be to take out the majority of the bolts. So let's start off by removing this part here, you just push this button here and remove this. This is just the actual container that holds the junk. This is the filter, and here is your sucking head, your actual part that sits on the ground and has this channel that gets uh, deeper until it gets to this point. And that's to help with the suction so that we can get suction even all the way over here. But obviously it would be the strongest in the middle. So that's that part, but we're not gonna be looking at that part and that's not the interesting bit. The interesting bit is in here. So there'll be another little foam filter on here. That's more of a dust collector. If, once you take that off, you'll see this grill and inside here is your actual motor. And so you can see on the back side, there'll be a number of holes with screws in them. So that's what we're going to be pulling those out right now with just a standard Phillips head screwdriver. A little bit of interesting information. This camera that I'm filming with right now is what I film all my videos with. It's a Canon PowerShot and it's I think from around, I got it in 2013, so it's probably maybe a 2013, 2011, 12 uh, model. And it has been abused greatly because I was little kid when I got it. So I was not nice with it. And so it, I still use it to film videos actually YouTube videos now on a more professional level and it still works although I definitely could use to get an upgrade because this camera just doesn't film very high quality videos alright so once you've undone all the screws you can dump them out alright so then this piece here this also has some screws in it so you need to take those off as well Okay, so now that we have this piece off, we are ready to pull it apart. Oh, and I forgot to mention, to take the handle off, you just flip this up and pull the handle off. So, every screw has been taken out, so now we can just pull it apart. And sometimes there'll be a little clip in here that'll keep it together, so you have to pry at it and pull it, and that's where like a, a flathead screwdriver would come in handy to pry it apart a little bit. But... Other than that, it should be really simple to take apart at this point. So once you pull this off, this is the interesting bit in here. Oh, and make sure you unplug it before you take stuff off because this, if it's not unplugged, you'll have live power going to the switch here and, and you could definitely get electrocuted. I've got electrocuted before. It's no fun. House power is not to be messed with. So be careful in that respect. But anyways, here is the motor. This is a DC brush motor, and it probably is around, this one's, um, if I had to guess, I'd say it's around 1 to 2 horsepower. It, they spin really fast, like around 30,000 RPM, maybe more. That was just my rough calculation. You can actually calculate. If you watch my video on how to calculate horsepower, I'll put a little link to that video, probably over here maybe. But anyways, that goes into depth on how to calculate RPM and stuff, but the point is is that this 
thing spins fast. And you can actually pull it out. All these wires will come out as well. And once you have it out, you can see this is the intake. So there's an impeller in there. And this is the intake. And then the exhaust, it blows back out here. And these little fins redirect the air in as it's coming out radially to this motor to help cool it. Because, yeah, it's, it generates a lot of heat. You can get this cover off. It's a little harder, though. All these little flanges that are bent in on all four corners, you'd have to unbend those with, like, a flathead screwdriver or something. So, um, so why the air, sometimes when you fill here, the air is hot, and that's because it's been moving past the motor and getting hot? Yes, much. that's correct. The exhaust air is for two things. It's just to get it out of there so it can suck more air in, and it's also to cool the motor because the motor is generating heat, so as the air flows past it, it has to flow right past all these coils and the, the stators and the actual spinning component, and that creates and that sucks the heat away from the motor and blows it out. So yeah, if you run a vacuum for a while and you feel the exhaust air, it'll actually be warm. That's just from the motor heating it. I'm going to see if I can get something to take this off just to show you because it's really cool and I might even turn it on with the cover off because it's, it's really cool. Like, it's a really interesting thing to see. So. Alright, well that actually wasn't very hard. I just pried up with a little flathead, got in here and pried those up and then pried it on off. And it does look cool. So here's the impeller. So you can see this is where it sucks in air and then the spinning motion flings out the air molecules out the sides. And then they hit this wall, obviously, because this is on here like that. So they hit that wall, and you get directed down into these little holes on the side here, which all angle out the back. So it'll be blown back instead of just out. So it'll kind of be blown out and back a little bit, so it gets uh, this motor cool and comes back out with the ho these holes here in the casing. So it's kind of a little sketchy, but I think I'm going to try to start it up like this so you can see this thing spin and it'll blow her out pretty hard. Yeah, just be careful with these things cuz I mean this is the blade's covered. It has this is I forgot what this is called, but it has a cover on the top and bottom with this impeller. So it's not like there's any blades that are going to cut you, but you still wouldn't really want to touch this thing while it's spinning. But enough safety lectures. Let's 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 turn this thing on. I'm gonna hold it down with a screwdriver on the rubber bit, so it doesn't come flying out. Cause it when it starts up, it jerks a little. Cause it it's a rush of torque. But here goes. You can tell that's very loud. It's way louder with that. So yeah, interesting. I'm gonna unplug it. Now I guess let's put this thing back together. It's kinda warm after you run it, so... Now I'll turn it on once again. And it works. You can vacuum with it.
set of suction. You can actually see into the see the brushes in there. That is how a vacuum cleaner works. And this little modification, I just did it with a pocket knife. I just cut out those bins to make it give it better airflow. You don't, I wouldn't recommend doing that, but I would say that if you want to, go ahead. I mean, it increases airflow, so it definitely doesn't hurt the operation at all. It makes it better. So anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you learned a little bit. There's a good chance that the majority of my audience already knows about the basics of how a vacuum cleaner works. But if you didn't, I hope you were able to learn something. Thank you for watching. I sure hope you enjoyed this video.